Welcome everybody, Three Count Thursday, but it's a Tuesday, so it's not really a Three Count Thursday. Um, it is uh, August the fourth, and uh, I figured because we don't we we don't talk too much, um, like reviewing the current product each and every week. So um, I feel like last night's RAW kind of required a little bit extra uh, focus and attention um, because there was I feel like there's a lot to unpack. Uh, from last night, and I'm not doing this uh, by myself. Uh, Ryan is on the line uh, because he uh, he was back from vacation, watched wrestling last night. So um, here uh, here he's jumping in. Ryan, how you doing on a uh, on a Tuesday afternoon? Very good. Yeah, I still got uh, today tomorrow off from work, so uh, real excited. I have I didn't watch wrestling the entire time I was on. I didn't watch a second of wrestling. And I'll tell you what, Big Jim, I came into yesterday fully refreshed and ready to watch wrestling again. Very nice. That's always a good feeling. I mean, you know, I don't, I mean, I usually watch Raw every week. I don't always watch the Wednesday night stuff. Um, I've, I've caught Impact the last couple of weeks. I don't always watch SmackDown. Um, but, you know, like like this week, actually, I caught smackdown via the uh the hulu feed which is like you know just over an hour long it's condensed no commercials um it's a really really uh quick and easy watch same with nxt i watched nxt last week via the hulu feed and it was an hour so um if people have hulu uh take advantage of that as well like it's it obviously uh makes it a little bit easier to um to view, but yeah, it's it, it is kind of nice sometimes to 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 take a break and and get away, uh, regardless of what it is. I mean, uh, I wasn't sure we were gonna actually get to record this. If you hear, I don't know if anybody can hear, um, the like it sounds like a jet engine in the background. But um, <laughs> this morning, uh, the the uh, remnants or whatever of the uh, the hurricane tropical storm that has been working its way up the coast dumped uh, a bunch of rain here in uh, central Pennsylvania and uh, I was I was vacuuming gallons and gallons of water out of the basement today um so uh we're trying to uh trying to dry out but I'm like you mean you mean you mean studio L yes oh yes oh yeah obviously the basement of studio L of course um which is where we record I don't know why we don't utilize the whole building but um hey, babe. But uh, keeping it kayfabe, brother. Um, but uh, before we jump into talking about Raw, I just want to hit um, a couple of these. On this day. Because what would a three-count Thursday be? I'm just going to hit a couple of uh, birthdays, three of them today. Um, Dean Malenko, born August 4th, 1960. And then uh, Suicide and Frankie Kazarian, <laughs> uh, born, wow. born both on this day. Oh, excuse me. On this day. In uh, 1977, the co- what's the coincidence there that they were both born? Wow. Wow. That's pretty crazy that they were both born uh, on the same day. So uh, three birthdays. Yeah, one's, in, one's in AEW now. I believe Suicide may have retired. Maybe uh, pops up in TNA Impact every once in a while. He... But uh, wow, they were both contracted to Impact TNA at the same time. Born, oh, that's wild. Right, he actually, I think he popped up uh, on Impact last week, if memory, uh, if memory serves. So, um, Suicide's still out there, uh, yeah, of course, Kazarian uh, in AEW now. So, but uh, pretty crazy. So, just a brief on this day. Uh, for August, uh, August the fourth. Um, so yeah, let's let's jump into this, Ryan, because like. Uh, you know, the, I, WWE was obviously doing a lot of legwork yesterday to try and uh, drum up some some excitement about their uh, their Monday night program, um, which obviously, f- for better, for worse, if you care about them, if you don't care about them, whatever, um, ratings not have not been great. Like, live viewership not been great on Raw recently, um, even though I think the shows have been pretty good. I mean, I know you, you didn't see it last week. But I think the last couple of weeks they, they've they've actually been putting out um, quality product between storyline and and in ring work, um, but but this week the, you know the the word out of the dirt sheet and the uh, news with a Z was that uh, you know it, it's chaotic and uh, they're just kind of doing they're throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks and whatever and then 
all of a sudden we hear, um, you know, and in WWE even publicizing it, Shane McMahon was going to be uh, on Raw. The best in the world! Shane McMahon! Uh, was was going to be on last night. Oh, and, uh... And then the, the the news that there was going to be a a, a new faction that was going to, you know, disrupt the WWE landscape and, um, you know, just just a lot of uh, a lot of kind of buzz around last night's show. And um, and then I think it was just a little bit before uh, before Raw actually went on the air, I started seeing some scuttlebutt around the around the uh the twitter world that the wwe was going to introduce like some sort of like legit fight fight club brawl for all two something like that and and i i was like uh oh (laughs) um and the only thing i thought is like if, if if it's like the fight pit that we saw in nxt like maybe i can get behind it because and and I, I think you I think we all talked about it on the show that like we I think we all enjoyed the fight pit right love the fight pit I thought it was a very fresh take on uh, on wrestling so I thought you know if this thing's gonna be like the fight pit and it's used um sparingly like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna freak out I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be that guy if you will. That's just going to see Shane McMahon on Raw and just assume that it's going to be horrible. Now, of course, you know, being the uh, the Vince apologist, WWE apologist that I am, why would I jump to a negative conclusion, right? I mean, why wouldn't I give it a, a fair shake? But, <laughs> but like, you know, my thought, because, you know, the, the, another thing that's been rumored and discussed for, for the last couple of weeks is where is SummerSlam going to be? Well, everybody gets pissed off and shits their brains out when Stephanie McMahon makes an announcement or whatever. So I thought maybe they're just going to bring Shane in to tell us uh, what Carnival Cruise Line that SummerSlam is going to be on or, or, <laughs> or what beach they're shutting down. Um, but instead, we see Shane McMahon, and I think it was somewhere around like 930, um, in like a hazy, like – differently lit corner of the performance center warehouse um, with a ring with ring posts and no ropes and said the raw underground is going to debut at 10 o'clock. And I'm like, um, what, did, what did I just see? <laughs> like, um, and it's just like a bunch of people standing around smacking the ring and two guys fighting. And it's like, um, okay. Uh, so like let, let's pause there. Like when when you first see that that moment where Shane McMahon's like Fight Club debuts at ten o'clock and you see what's going on behind him. Like at that point, what was the Ryan? What was the thought that went through your head? And then I'll tell you my what went through thought, mine. My first thought is, wow, this segment needs strippers, <laughs> and then boom, <laughs> dancers were there. <laughs> Thank God. Um, <laughs> My my first thought is WWE is being critiqued as stale. This is something different. Yeah, I mean, you know, and for it's something different for me, like I saw it and I was like, I I, I kind of had mixed review. Like like just through my head, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be bad because like immediately I kind of went to like brawl for all, but like UFC brawl for all or something, and I'm like. This this is probably going to go over poorly, but like I was I, I wasn't I wasn't panning it yet. I was like, okay, well, you know, we got a half an hour, and and then like the first the first segment went and and um I got to try and find the uh, the name uh, Dabakato, which I believe he was in 
uh, the greatest Royal Rumble. Was that that's Baba Tunde, isn't it? Yeah, Baba Tunde just repackaged. Okay, so he brings out Dabakato, beats up a couple of guys, and just like that, we go back to we go back to ringside with Tom and Saxton and Samoa Joe, and I was like, okay. Um, besides the crappy go-go dancers that didn't seem to be dancing to any music that was playing in the background, um, I didn't hate it. I, I, I didn't necessarily love it, but it was, it was real quick. Um, it obviously, you know, wasn't like a, a shoot fight. Um, and, and I, I didn't, I, again, I didn't hate it. And, and it kind of had... Like I know, uh, what is it? Uh, the Bloodsport does the 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 show without uh, the ropes, um, and, and yeah, I know Chikara did a thing. I, I never saw the Chikara thing, um, but there's been there's been other other companies that have kind of done these uh, these shows and, and segments or whatever with um, no ring ropes, and it's more of like a fight setting as opposed to a wrestling setting. So I didn't I didn't hate it after the first time we saw it, and again it was it was really quick. I think. I think the first segment came on at like 10.01 and it was off our screen at like 10.04, 10.05. It wasn't bad. So I didn't really know at that point who Dabakato was. Like Shane was was selling him as if he was some like world-renowned fighter. I mean, he's big dude. The guy, I mean, he's 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 a he's a real big dude, as as Ric Flair would say. He's a real big dude. But besides besides that, I was like, this was okay. This is okay. Yeah, um, just a, a little background on, on Baba Tunde, a uh, Polish guy. Uh, shoot, I think 6'10", not 7 foot, but they're going to round that up every day of the of week. Course. When you get a talk like that. Um, uh, a football player. Okay. Been with the WWE since 2016, so 2016. Um, he signed on with the Performance Center um, and, like, learned pro wrestling in the four years since. Okay. So for somebody that, that, you know, wasn't an independent wrestler or something like that, he is 100% WWE homegrown and, like, started from scratch. So you're going to see, like, WWE in a big guy like Baba Tunde, which I think is his shoot name. Okay. Baba Tunde is his real name. Um, Daba Kato now, uh, the, new, the new ring name, because they can make merchandise for that. Um, sure. He was on the Minnesota Vikings practice squad in 2015 quit football after that okay yeah uh, i mean they showed up in the fight club it all comes full circle <laughs> right exactly exactly um you know the, the, then the, the only thing i really didn't like was um i mean besides like the 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 weird go-go dancers what it like was the the camera cuts? I mean, that was like Shield beat down on steroids. Um, it was it was almost like I know um, I know the, um, Tim's Tim's pal Marcus um, from the final wrestling place. Yeah, gets uh, gets like motion sickness for yeah, and, yeah, he from some of the ca- camera work. He probably did not like that segment one bit. Um. The, those segments but but really i mean and just talking about the first one i it, again i i thought it, i thought it was okay i i you know it was in and out pretty quick i i thought i because i you didn't know going into it it was going to be like the whole hour the whole final hour or you know because well didn't they try that a couple years ago where where you know it was like raw unsanctioned or whatever for the for the final hour um well, but, I think that was like a week or two they did that. If I feel it, it didn't last long. No, certainly did not. We'll see how long this lasts. But, um, but after the first one, like, did did you were you all right with it? I don't. I don't know how sustainable this is going to be. Yeah. Um. I don't. I don't believe somebody like a Dolph Ziggler belongs in an underground fight club. I believe Dolph Ziggler is a great wrestler mm-hmm. and like Matt wrestler, but this is not necessarily what I think of when I think of underground fighting. Um, yeah. Eric from the Viking Raiders, I believe that. Big tattooed guy throwing knees and elbows. Hing That's what I... The um, <laughs> I, I... I just don't know how sustainable this is really, really going to to be 
Um, Bob Lashley. I totally believe this guy would succeed in an Bob! underground fight. I, I just don't know how sustainable this is going to be in the land of an uh, the land of professional wrestling, where you know things are work. You know this this isn't a shoot. This isn't the brawl for all. People comparing it right. to the brawl for, couldn't be more wrong. Yeah. This is scripted. Um, it, it is no way a shoot fight. The WWE is not going to let their guy. Now, might it be stiff? Perhaps, but it's not shoot. Right. They're not going out there slamming and killing each other with elbows. That's not what we're watching. Right. We're um, not. So we're not watching we Bart. How long? We're we're not watching Bart Gunn get butter beaned again. Right. Right. That's not what's going to happen here. So don't. So the people comparing it are dead wrong. Yes. People that oh, this is just another bro. Well, you're dead wrong. That's not at all what this is. This is still scripted. This is still. Um, entertainment. It's just a different flavor of it. It's weird. I, I don't know. Here's the, I, the reports of the WWE trying stuff, just throwing stuff on the wall and see, that's kind of what this feels like. Sure. They're being criticized that ratings are down and they're not, and they're kind of stale. So they say, you know what, let's scrap everything and just throw this at the wall for a little bit. And see, now again, I get their whole program's not that, but this is a big, big change. Yeah. Yeah, this this is dramatically different than than anything we've seen um, in a long time, if not ever. I mean, I don't I don't remember ever seeing a a, a underground fight club uh, on 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 WWE programming. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously you saw um, y- you know uh, Eric from the uh, from the Viking Raiders Hinga, dinga, um, in the in the second segment, and then the the show closed with the with the hurt business kind of taking over. Um, and taking charge and Shane McMahon at the end of the show was kind of like, I'm out hurt business kind of running this and, uh, see, see you guys next week. Um, which, which really, I mean the first two segments and again, even the second time with, with, uh, with the Viking Raiders on uh, that, that was, that was a couple of minutes. I mean, the first two together, I think were about seven minutes. And then I think the final segment was about five, five or six. So we're talking, right. we're talking about a 10, 15 minutes at most, but it, it wasn't even 15 of a three hour program um, that, that the, this underground thing was. And then, you know, at the end with the, the hurt business kind of taking over, you know, and, and it seemed like people were kind of, kind of messing with them and, um, you know, messing with. You know, from the from the beginning, you know, there was a lot of continuity in this show, which which, which is pretty wild because the show itself was pretty kind of spastic and all over the place. But there was wow. moments of continuity with you know the the technical glitches, and I think we'll we'll talk about that with the the new faction. Um, but you know, it, it kind of led to this point where MVP and Shelton Benjamin and Bob Lashley go in and kind of clean house and are like, you know, people have to stop messing with us. We're in charge here. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it the, the, I thought the end segment was really, really good and not only makes me intrigued for raw next week, but, but how are they going to do this raw underground next week? And, and the one advantage I think is, I believe with the, with the taping schedules is they tape two weeks at a time. Um, so next week's raw I, I believe was was recorded right after they got done recording this one. So hopefully, and I and I am saying that hopefully, uh, there there is some continuity together with the Hurt Business and Raw Underground and and that sort of a thing because everybody was already there and that and that creative juice was was flowing already y- yesterday. Yeah, no, that that's a great great point. Um, you and I both, you know, with education in electronic media and television radio production how important continuity with a with with a project really really is that that if they ended with that segment of the hurt business standing tall to pick up and keep that momentum going next week um if they recorded right back to back it should create really really good program will it James, who the heck knows? You you, you know as good as I do that, that that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be good, right? But it should, it should, it should at least at at the very least, um, you know the the the, the two shows should have a similar feel, um, Correct. Like, like the last the last two weeks prior, um, 
I think had a similar feel to them um, with, with, with uh, you know, like Bailey and Sasha and, and the stuff with Asuka and Kyrie and all of that sort of stuff. And I thought the two shows um, were pretty good. So at least they should have a similar feel. Um, yeah, that, that's a good point. And again, if you hated this week on Raw, there's a chance you're not going to like next week. <laughs> Yeah, that's be that. There's a good chance that's gonna happen. And and like here, like here's my thing, and and it, this kind of goes, um, to the whole program, and and I almost soapboxed it yesterday and last night. It is, <laughs> is I I just I just I don't understand, especially with everything else going on, and right now there's twelve plus hours of NBA per day. 12 plus hours of the NHL every day. Um, there's golf, there's NASCAR, um, you know, throughout the week, there's baseball every day. Um, you know, like, like this, this past weekend was, I think the most, the most sports live sports on in, in a day, definitely in the month of August, but, but maybe like ever just because of how how everything has shaken out in 2020. Plus with all the different streaming services and all the you know all the different options on cable and YouTube TV and Amazon Prime and this and that. The thing that I just I, I really don't understand and and this this honest to god is not a shot at anybody in particular. But preach James that's where you're going. Preach. But I just don't understand continuing to to view a product that you're going to be miserable about not you watched it and you don't like it something that you are miserable about f- before it even happens like if 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 I you know if if there's a show that I watch and I've kind of gotten a little bit disinterested in it and then they start doing things that I just I just really don't like all the time I'm just not I'm just gonna stop watching it. And I've done that with some shows over the years. Which if you know me, and Ryan, you can attest to this, I'm a person that that will hang on because I just I I, I love to see how a show ends. Like I'll watch series finales of shows that I've only watched a couple episodes of just because I love to see things come to an end. So if, if I'm gonna actually walk away, like it's because I I really don't like it. So if my reaction when I hear um, hey, th- you know, Shane McMahon's coming back tonight. If my immediate reaction is, this is going to fucking suck, WWE is so fucking stupid, and they just continue to peddle the same fucking dumb, stupid old bullshit. Why do you continue? Like, I uh, that is that is what I don't understand. Now, if you watched last night, and you absolutely hated it, and you want to jump on to social media or to a podcast or whatever and say, I hated last night's Raw, especially Raw Underground, because blank. Then that's fine. But in the same time, there's people who assumed it was going to suck from the beginning and never gave it a shot. And 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 to me, I just, I can't, I can't reconcile, I can't, like I don't understand that with everything else going on everything every other option of entertainment that you can watch why do you go through this all the time it makes no sense Jim I'm going to I'm going to try to tie this together um in something that that's not sport related and and I may be wrong here in my assessment um I but I, you know where I'm at with masks I think people should wear masks mm-hmm. it's the least they can do to 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 get us through the current climate that we're in. I uh, got into an argument with a woman online about the voting and the online and the mail-in voting and yada, yada, yada. Uh-huh. Um, and she was just in a fit how um, we, we can stand in line at the checkout. Why can't we stand in line to vote? And my simple comment to her was, you literally can. <laughs> just because one thing, you can't. There's no, there's no right. rule saying you can't go to your polling place and vote. So just because something is happening doesn't mean it's happening and it's affecting you. Just because Raw is on TV doesn't mean you have to watch it. Right. Don't watch it. And if I mean, you don't want to vote, go fucking vote. Yeah. Just go to your polling. 
you literally can do it. Yeah, that's still a thing that can happen. Absolutely. Right. I mean, most cable providers are in the over 100 of, of options to watch TV. Yeah. There's no rule saying because you at one time watched pro wrestling, you have to watch pro wrestling Monday night, 8 o'clock, USA. It's not a rule. You can go <laughs> fucking... There's there's hockey on what from noon till close of the day. Oh yeah, I mean today the the first game started at noon, Eastern time. the The last game of the day will start at ten thirty Eastern time. So it'll go till probably one in the morning. It is like thirteen hours of hockey today, and it's there's and it's constant. Right, and here's the deal: if you're a hockey fan, it doesn't necessarily matter what team is playing. You just want to watch the sport. Oh yeah, especially with a four month break and and we never got playoffs and these are kind of these are the playoffs now. Right, this is what you should you should want and you should be happy to watch. I've never ever watched a program longer than an episode where I was like, "Oh my god, this is just awful. I hate this." Wait. I've watched Time out. Program you before. watched the whole season of the Big Show show. Yeah, okay, that was to prove a point. <laughs> That's the exception to the rule. There, that, right, that is the exception. That is not the rule. Um, I've watched a program, Jim, where midway through, like, the first hour, wow, these uh, characters just aren't grabbing me like I thought they were. I'm not going to invest another minute in this. Flip. Yeah, I'll, I'll, give, an, I'll give another great it's example. So um, we like like the my my wife and I love like the MTV Challenge, like Real World yeah. Road Rules Challenge. Um, so then we heard about this show on Netflix called Floor is Lava, where it's like two or three teams. There's like an obstacle course, um, and there's like a there's like a red liquid that that is the quote unquote lava that if you fall in you're dead, um, and you have to get from point A to point B using the obstacles, um, and you know if there's a tie it comes down to timing. Um, and, and we love it. And okay. there's, there's a dude there, right? Like some famous guy. Yeah. Yeah. I forget that. I, he's some like TV producers, like the guy that like he's created this. Um, fluffy. yeah, a little fluffy, a little fluffy. Um, so we love that show. And then, um, there's the show Holy Moly, which is like the mini golf on steroids that's on ABC. Um, Rob, hey, Rob Riggle hosts it. Uh, Rob Riggle and Joe Tessitore are the, uh, the commentators freaking love it. It's super cool. Um, so then there was a show that debuted, uh, I think it was the, 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 the JJ Watt brothers, JJ, TJ, and, uh, I forget the other one. Um, yeah. but it was, uh, it was called, it was like a tag show. It was like ultimate tag. So we recorded it. We watched about six minutes of it and we're like, this is dumb. And guess what? I haven't watched another second of ultimate tag. Um, now the, the, the cannonball show. With the Miz, I yes. I I like Cannibal. Now you tried it, didn't like it, right? Um, it was I feel just like that Wipeout game. Yeah, it's cheesy. It's kind of it's it's kind of in that it's vein. Thing. It's cheesy, right? Right. It's funny. Um, if nothing is on, I will put it on and like have it on. Yes. I feel like Cannonball. I I'm not gonna say I, I feel like Cannonball would do really great on ESPN Eight, the Ocho. I believe that. Like yeah. I feel, I feel like it's in, it's kind of in that vein. Like when, when back in March, when all the sports shut down and ESPN aired the Ocho Day, and it was, uh, it was like the the slippery staircase and the, you know, and that kind of stuff. It's kind of in that vein. It's just, it's a lighthearted fun, like you know. So, like, but again, those type of shows generally enjoy. But the Ultimate Tag thing, didn't like it. Haven't watched another second of it. You know what? I also don't do. I also don't watch it to bitch about it, and I don't just go on. Uh, social media just to bitch how bad Ultimate Tag is. So you haven't watched it since? Nope. Nope. I recorded the first the, the, the first episode. We started watching it, and it just, it, it, you know, I, it looked exciting in the trailer, but in execution, it, it, once the show was laid out, I was like, this just, it's kind of boring. It's just, it's just people kind of running away from each other and trying to play tag. It was, it was. Like I, th I thought it kind of had an American Gladiators look to it from the trailer, and it just wasn't that at all. <laughs> but like, yeah, I just I haven't watched another second of it. Right. So, so why watch it? Why continue to go back and gripe about the things you don't like about yeah. it 
on social media, on uh, wrestling podcast Facebook pages. That's fine. <laughs> Say you don't like it and then just swear off of it. Jim, I just went a week and a half without watching a lick of wrestling and I'm fine. Yeah. I'm actually okay. Yeah, you can survive. What happened last week, I don't even I couldn't even tell you what happened. And that's okay. That's so like oh, and, Sasha, Sasha became the champion. Like that's a big thing. Yeah. I just I missed it live and that's fine. Sure. That's that's There's 101 different ways you can find results on TV, on uh social media, from the WWE pages. It's so easy. I guess what? Just, <laughs> and last night on you. last night on Raw they recapped the biggest moments from last week anyway. So if you miss a week, they're going to tell you the things you you really need to know. Like, there you have it. Like Sasha won the title. Kyrie's gone. Um, you know, you know, MVP called out Apollo Crews again. Those sort of things. Like, those, you know, Drew and Randy are on a collision course for SummerSlam. Um, you know, Seth Rollins keeps blinding people with the ring steps. Like, <laughs> you know, those, those are the things that you had to know. You didn't, you didn't have to watch every match. You didn't have to watch all three hours. Like WWE does a great job on their YouTube channel and social media channels of giving you re like recaps and highlights too. So like if you miss a week or two or three, you're, you're going to be okay. It, you're you're going to survive. You're going to get through it. <laughs> Jim, have you have you ever, and you and I are bigger fellas. We are. Have you ever, like, made a lot of something, let's say, like, a barbecue or, or a, a big cookout where you have, like, burgers and hot dogs? Uh-huh, yeah. And then the next day you have leftover burgers and hot dogs. Yes. For lunch. Well, when it comes dinner time, guess what you just don't want to eat? The burgers left. and hot dogs again. Right. So just change up your fucking routine a little bit. Yeah. Eat something different. Come and then eat, you can go then enjoy them a week later. Same thing with pro wrestling. If you hate it, just give yourself a minute. If you are only enjoying what AEW is doing, just watch Dynamite. You, on Monday nights, you can go at 7 o'clock and watch their tag team tournament on their YouTube channel, which is stupid, and they should have put it uh, and highlighted it on Dynamite. That's for another podcast at another time. <laughs> yeah, we'll but talk. So we'll talk about that on Thursday. Impact is on. Too. There's so many things you can do. That's not the WWE. Just because that's the popular one, the most popular one, the most successful one, doesn't mean that's the only one. Right. Like there's there's so there's just so many options. Like again, Impact tonight, two shows tomorrow. Um, you know, there's New Japan, there's All Japan, there's Stardom, there's MLW, there's Ring of Honor, there, you know, like, you know, there's, you know, IWTV. And I get, like, th th there's not th there's not as much current new live product as there normally is. But, like, GCW's been running shows, and other indies are running shows, and I'm sure you can find them on streaming services. Um you know, Saturday night, I ordered the talk, talk and shop a mania show. It was like, an, it was a little over an hour. It was so dumb. It was so cheesy, but I fucking laughed for over an hour. Um, at, at this, and what was it, like 15 bucks? it was 15 bucks. It was on fight TV. Um, if you order it, you can watch it as many times as your little heart desires. Um, <laughs> you know, so like, yeah, I don't, I, I just, I, I, I don't get it. And and also, like, another thing to kind of tie Raw Underground to, to the rest of the show, like, so many people are complaining that w, WWE doesn't build new stars. And the first reaction to Shane McMahon being announced was, um, they're, you know, well, you know, they want to, you know, they never build new stars and they're bringing Shane McMahon back and it's the same recycled bullshit. Well, first off, you did see a new star in um, uh, Baba Tunde. I forget his actual – is. Uh, his his WWE name now, um, Dabakato. So that's a new star. Uh, also, that you know, just just kind of going down. And I just took a couple of notes off the top of my head um, as as Raw had gone off the air. Um, I mean, Drew McIntyre is a star that wasn't anywhere near the forefront a year ago. Um, 
you know, the street profits, Montez Ford with, you know, the, this kind of this poisoning angle with, and, and the stuff that they've been doing with Angel Garza and Andrade, like that's kind of new and fresh. Um, you have Shayna Baszler back in the mix, looking to set her eyes uh, on the Raw women's title. But, you know, Vince hates her and everything. Uh, Dominic Mysterio is debuting at, at SummerSlam um, in what I think should actually be a really good match because he looks like he's ring aware. Plus, uh, you're in there with a guy like Seth Rollins who's going to be able to, cont- uh, you know, kind of um, take control and kind of be a ring general in that match. Uh, Apollo Crews is a champion in the WWE right now uh, and has been part of a pretty fun storyline. The Riot Squad, that thing, they're feuding with uh, with the Iconics who, you know, so like they are pushing new things. And that's just on Monday Night Raw, by the way. Um, there's Jim, a lot. What you're, what, you're, what, you're not, what you're not getting is the rehash of existing stars and, and re-flavoring them a little bit like a Shelton Benjamin and Bob Lashley and MVP for Christ's sake. I mean, other than Bob Lashley a year ago, nobody even knew Shelton Benjamin was still a WWE employee no. and MVP thought long retired. Right. Here's a guy in the hurt business that quite frankly is booming. It's probably the hottest thing on I Raw right now. Like, and, and I thought, because uh, yeah, older wrestlers doesn't mean that these are not new creations and fresh ways to look at things right and and like i mean people are gonna people are gonna go well the the hurt business is kind of like the new uh nation of domination and whatever but like so you do you really think that factions during the attitude era was something new and original like as if the WWE with Degeneration X and the Nation of Domination and um, the Ministry and the Corporation, those those weren't new ideas. By the way, like the Four Horsemen had been around, um, you know, like the Freebirds had been around. Like there, there's been numerous factions and groups and teams, and um, you know, it, it's, it, it, it is all recycled. We, we talked regularly on this show that there's very little stuff that you're going to see that's brand new, like the raw underground brand new to WWE, but there's companies been doing that kind of stuff for years. So like even what's new in WWE might not be new totally. Um, now I, I'm pretty sure nobody ever did the, the eye for an eye thing. I'm pretty sure that one, that one might've been brand new, but like, you know, and, and I, and I, and I, and I, I got to pull up, I, I need to find it on Twitter because, uh, yesterday, you know, th- there was, there was somebody I kind of went at it with that had said that, you know, the, the WWE doesn't do anything new or exciting or anything like that. And I said, I absolutely think they are. And they, they go, well, I challenge you to name me five things right now that the WWE does that, that you find exciting. And I'm going I'm to try and find it here. But I think I actually named more than five. And then they went on to tell me that they haven't even watched current, like the current product since, um, since the, uh, the, the, the last New Orleans WrestleMania. And I'm like, so how are you even judging? Their opinion's totally null and void. Right. And they're like, well, I read what happens. I'm sorry. Here's the deal. I don't watch the Phillies anymore because they suck. Um, (laughs) If it's not Kurt Schilling and Mitch Williams and uh, Darren Dalton catching, uh, John Crook better be on first base. I'm not watching baseball. Right. (laughs) Um, I'm trying to find it. Maybe the person deleted the tweets. I don't know because I can't, I can't find it in our, uh, in our notifications. Where the hell is Mickey Morandini? Um, oh, here we go. Uh, oh crap. I lost it now. Um, but anyway, like it just. I, I just sit there and I, and and I just I don't it 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 doesn't make sense and 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 even before the COVID era because again I think a lot of the things that are happening right now are a product of 
the situation at hand. I don't think we get Raw Underground if WWE is in a different building every week with fans in the building. Um, I think you're right. You know, I, I I think this is this is unfortunately a product of of what is happening right now. You know, in in the world, not just in the WWE. So, you know, but even even beforehand, everybody's like, we want new stars, we want new stars, we want new stars. And then WWE goes, okay, well, here's Lacey Evans. And the fans go, that's not who we wanted. We're going to shit all over this. You know? Right. So it's it's not it's not even that, that, that people want new stars. It's people want the star that they think should be booked to the top. Because WWE has given us new stars for for years. I mean, t- like technically speaking, Baron Corbin <clears throat> is a quote unquote new star over the last couple of years. Like he's somebody that, that WWE hitched their wagon to, and people just, people just crap on it. So it's not it's not even that WWE isn't bo- and and actually I think what's happening now is. WWE can stick with things that wouldn't have worked in a normal situation because you don't have the the fan reaction in building. Because if somebody goes out there and it's crickets, then then it, then it's it's it, you know then you're in 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 big big trouble. But right now, you know they they, they can commit to things. As opposed to going, oh shit, this isn't working. They're going out on TV with dead air, and we have to we have to switch it. Like, you know, they're they're able they're able now to, um, they're able now to to stick with things because you don't have the the the, the dead reaction. So here here was, the, um, <clears throat> I had tweeted something along the lines yesterday afternoon of like, this afternoon is a is a perfect example of why wrestling but particularly the WWE um has such a hard time because it you know this is right after the the Shane McMahon announcement people started going crazy and um somebody was like well they're the longest running company so like a precedent's been set for um you know them them screwing things up and blah 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 and so, so you can't blame people I'm like actually I can and I said people say they want new stars but bitch when WWE put, books the wrong people they say they want fresh ideas but then shit on everything WWE comes up with. Like, when the Boneyard match was announced, people groaned. When Firefly Funhouse match was announced, people groaned. <clears throat> like, when Bray Wyatt, and, and I even fell into this trap, so I'm not, even, I'm not even saying I'm not guilty of it at times, but when Bray Wyatt debuted with a sweater on, I was like, oh, God. But it, it, it turned out okay. So, like, I'm not saying WWE, I said, I'm not saying WWE is without fault. But immediate haters are insufferable. And the guy goes, what's the five best angles or cool things WWE has produced at, as of late? And I said, just off the top of my head, Sonya Mandy, MVP's faction, Randy Orton being the legend killer again, uh, Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss from last Friday on SmackDown, by the way, if people didn't see that. Uh, Biggie's getting a singles push. Uh, Andrade Garza and Zelina. Uh, Sasha Bailey is the two women power trip. And the and like... You know, the, the, the guy's like, the, the person responded, that's cool. For me, it's just ice cream flavors. Can't argue someone's opinion. I stopped watching Mania, or after Mania in New Orleans. I think Biggie's push is long overdue. Orton contending for a championship in 2020 is hilarious. So immediately, that's when I called him out. And I was like, your, your, your argument's invalid because, yes, on the surface, and I would have been the same way if I didn't watch every week, Randy Orton as challenging for the WWE championship in 2020 would sound ridiculous but it's been one of the best things in WWE for the last month or so for the hell for the the damn covid era yeah yeah if you're not watching it's almost like you're entitled to your opinion it just doesn't carry any weight right it just it doesn't man and i agree Randy Orton I was never a Randy Orton guy. You can go back and look at our archive. <laughs> I've never championed Randy Orton in anything. That he's been able to take whatever criticism 
and, and make an angle that, you know, he's been lazy the last couple of years and mailed it in um, and really just turned it up now, man, absolutely. Is it a new concept? Not necessarily, but it's a different flavor of Randy Orton. So if the guy wants to talk about ice cream flavors, he's probably right. But it just sounds like he no longer likes this brand of ice cream. That's fine. Just don't buy that brand of ice cream, dude. It's that right. simple. Right. It's that If like, I hated Breyer's ice cream, I'm not going to go to Twitter and find people tweeting about Breyer's ice cream and be like, hey, tell me what you like about Breyer's ice cream. <laughs> and then be like, I just don't like it. Right. You, like, it you, you can't it's argue with me because that's my opinion. opinion. You know. Just just <laughs> Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, dude. It's it's man. Talking about ice cream that you don't like. Yeah, I mean, like I'm not, I'm not a, uh, like I'm not, I'm not a big fan. Well, you know, I, I have a great example. Um, uh, the, uh, the I forget the the brand of it. It's greens because it's the green packaging, greens ice cream. The one time I'm walking down the aisle, and obviously, again, I'm I'm a big guy. I'm a, I'm a big guy. You've seen you've seen our videos. Um. They had a jelly donut flavor of ice cream. Um, it uh, I, I don't I don't remember if it was just vanilla ice cream or something, but it it was I think it was like vanilla and it was supposed to be like flavored with like donut icing, and then it had and then it had and then it had pieces of donut and sprinkles in the uh. ice cream, and I thought, dude, I, that I I love jelly do or I love donuts, I love jelly donuts. Um, I love ice cream, so why would I not like jelly donut ice cream? So I bought it, and I went home, and I opened it up, and I took a spoon, and I took out a spoon of the ice cream, and I put it in my mouth, and it tasted like the smell of, like, Comet Cleaner. Oh. And I was like, I was like, this isn't, um... This isn't good. So I thought maybe, maybe it was just the first bite. So I, I tried again. No, uh-uh. So, uh, so I, I, I unfortunately just threw away a, you know, $3.50 thing of ice cream. And uh, I never bought Green's Jelly Donut ice cream again. I never talked about it. I never tweeted about it. I didn't seek out anybody who loves jelly donut ice cream to tell them that they are a Green's Jelly Donut ice cream apologist. Um, and and I and like I, I I just I just don't get it anymore. I get all the various other flavors of ice cream that I enjoy. Um, and to be, I mean, I don't tweet about them. I probably should. I pr- I should probably tweet about ice cream more. Um, but I just. I just kind of, I just kind of let it, let it go. I'm okay. Like, I don't, I don't like Grey's Anatomy. I don't even know if it's still a current show anymore. Um, Couldn't tell you. But uh, there's a lot of people that like Grey's Anatomy. Uh, I let them, I let them have that. And I don't, I don't need to, I don't need to, to get on their case about it. Uh, The show Friends. I don't get into, to social media fights with people because, they like friends or the office. I mean, I watched it. It's okay. Um, not really my thing, but you know, I, it, I just, I, I don't get, especially man, there's so much other, like there's so much other bullshit. Like just why, why, why do you have to be miserable? I just, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I truly don't. Um, but uh, the the other the other only other re- thing I really kind of wanted to uh, to highlight was um, the faction, and if you blinked, you missed it because <laughs> like WWE was hyping that yesterday. So, and I guess that like the 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 faction debuting, if you will, um, was the the like the security footage where they like lit the transformer on fire. Um, cause like at the, initially at the end of raw, I was like, so, so where, where was the faction? 
Um, but I guess that was it. So I guess hopefully we'll we'll see more or hear more about it next week. Um, but like I'm in, I'm intrigued to see where they go next with it because they had the glitches all night. I think that was that like the the idea behind that I was stemming from the that explosion earlier in the day was causing issues. So um, that faction made their presence felt. I, I'm curious to see where it goes. I read somewhere, I don't know if it was from a Meltzer report, that uh, the, the one of the tweets may have been sent out a little too soon, that the, the debut of the faction, that that, that WWE tweet was sent out um, too soon, so they had to scramble and, and come up with something. Um, uh. If that's the case, I mean, that might, that might make sense. You see these hooded people throw some Molotov cocktails at what I thought was just a dumpster. I, di- I didn't know what that was. I didn't know it was a, a generator stack. I-, I had no clue what, what was going on there. Yeah. Um, I thought they were Akira Tozawa's ninjas. <laughs> they and did. That made sense. <laughs> they, uh, they, they did look a little too much like the ninjas. I will agree with that. So, so I thought, why are they doing this? earlier today that didn't necessarily set up Tazawa guaranteeing a win in his ma- I mean he is the 24/7 champion he is but but none of that none of that made sense to me um <laughs> and so afterward I tweeted about like hey so much for the debut and somebody pointed out that like that was probably it um you know continue let the rumors begin and swirl and here's the deal I I don't know if it's going to be undisputed era but if raw and with the undisputed era in the ring at Raw Underground, saying we're the undisputed era and business is good, boom, or something like that, with Red Dragon posing behind Adam Cole and Roddy Strong, people are going to love Raw. Yeah, I think people say Raw was one of the greatest shows we've ever seen. You know, here's the undisputed era coming in like these rough and tumble guys. Uh, and it's great. I love it. Uh, that's not what happened, and people shit all over it. For sure. Until the Undisputed Era debuts. Uh, and here's the deal. The video showed five people. Yeah. Some people have picked up that, uh, what is it, Marina uh, Shafir? I think the wife of Roddy Strong, one of the four MMA horsewomen, was not in the crowd during the Raw tapings. Ah. Uh... That- a fifth person in the Undisputed Era and the female representative, perhaps why the Undisputed Era would come and destroy generators with Molotov cock. I don't understand that. <laughs> that, yeah, that I don't know. That, um, but hey, I you mean. Know, something like that? I don't know. Sanity? <laughs> they, they might have done something like that. That's not. I don't think in the undisputed era, Emma. I mean, boom. Maybe that's part. I don't, I don't know. Right. And that's here's the deal. It's 2020, and I don't know something about pro wrestling. That's cool. I like that. Right. If I if I, I have to know, guess, is this a new faction? Is this people we're already seeing on Raw just put together? I like this. Yeah, I mean that's. I mean the hurt business is people that were on Raw that that just kind of came together. And and it's fantastic. I mean, I've said for weeks, like Bobby Lashley in twenty twenty, love it, absolutely love it. Like whatever they're doing with MVP and now Shelton Benjamin and Bobby Lashley, um, it's got my attention. It's been good. It's been really good TV. Like I have never been a Bobby Lashley fan in the WWE, and and really right. not even in TNA Impact, whatever. Like it just. He was never for me, you know, and, and, and here we are. And I mean, again, you know, like the Seth Rollins stuff with, um, you know, with with Murphy and like he was, he was going after, uh, Tom Phillips last night. Samoa Joe steps in the way Dominic comes out, you know, like Dominic Mysterio that you, the little kid that was, was part of that Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero feud is now like taller than Seth Rollins and is having his first match at SummerSlam. Um, right. Like, you know, that to me, that like that segment, that feud 
that that whole thing has been spectacular because we thought from the the word go that it was probably going to end up like Seth and Murphy versus you know Ray and Dominic and Dominic can just kind of get his feet wet but Seth and Ray can carry the action no we're getting a one on one here um and I'm I'm super intrigued by it because like Dominic in the, in these little like the segments where he's had physical combat has looked really comfortable in that setting so like he he seems like he's ready to go and uh so I'm excited by that and like you know and and th- people say WWE can't tell stories anymore Apollo Cruz was you know was was part of the IC title tournament gets hurt has to go away and every you know cuz cuz uh Andrade attacked him or is the US title tournament sorry um and Andrade attacked him and Everybody's like, oh, of course, you know, here we thought we were getting an Apollo Crews push and WWE doesn't like him and he's going away. And I was like, no, time out. Like, he's going to go away from being hurt. He's going to come back. I guarantee he wins the U.S. title. Guess what? He absolutely did it. And then, uh, you know, whether or what not he had COVID-19, which has been the speculated reason why he was off TV for a month, um, you know, he, he comes back and... MVP had, you know, created this new title and was declaring himself U.S. champion because Apollo couldn't be there um, at the horror show. And so now Apollo comes back. He's the new, he's the undisputed U.S. champion. And, you know, and and that feud's been a lot of fun. So it's like, and but that's been a, a, a multi-month story that's had so many different layers to it. It's like, don't tell me they can't do it. Like, you're just so many people are so ready to say they can't do it. This is it's stupid. It's dumb. That you know it's bullshit. Whatever. When they're actually doing all the things you say they can't do or don't do. Right, they're doing it on the regular. Mm-hmm. Like Sonia and Mandy has what? been told for months. What was that? The the Sonia and Mandy feud on SmackDown has been brilliantly oh. told for right. months. Right. You know, don't 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 let the facts get in your way, though, of, of spewing <laughs> your narrative. It's unreal, Jim. It's yeah, really, I mean, really, dude. Yeah. Like, I mean, I I enjoyed Raw last night. There was a few things, and we didn't even talk about the fact that the the person that everybody hates, Nia Jax. Now, again, it, she could be back next week or in two weeks or whatever when this quote unquote suspension is up. But like, she's kayfabe suspended. Why is nobody happy about that? The person, you know, that everybody hates from the women's division, you know, is uh, is now suspended for for in, indefinitely for beating up Pat Buck. Um, oh, Pat Buck. Poor Pat Buck. But Here's like, the deal. She didn't have an awful promo. No. You know, like, you but know. Was, was Raw an absolute grand slam last night? Surely wasn't. No. I'm never going to say it was. You know, uh, and maybe it's because I took a week and a half off, two weeks off, whatever, that I, I did. I enjoyed the show. Um, you know, am I enjoying AEW pretty regularly? I really am. But again, these are new stars put onto a program that's only been a year old. Right. You know, so yeah, I, and they're telling the same sort of stories too. Let's, let's, Let's look at that. It's the Cody Rhodes um, in the, uh, or, or open, the challenge, open challenge. We've seen the WWE always do that. That's really cool. That's how they brought up, who was it? Was it Kevin Owens came up? Yeah. That was one of the big surprises. Yeah, John Cena's open challenge was the debut of Kevin Owens. You know, so, so I love what they're doing with the indie talent. That's great. I'd love for the WWE to try to do that, but they would just get shit on for doing it. Oh, sure. You know, and, and yeah, it's it's – you know, again, nobody's doing anything new. It's different variations of old stuff. I mean, like everybody talks about how great the the falls count anywhere between um, the young bucks and the the butcher and the baker and the candlestick maker was the other week. And don't get me wrong, I enjoyed that match. I absolutely did. There was cool high spots. Um, I thought it starting in in the kitchen was different. Like, but again. That's not new. A false count anywhere tag match, not new. Sorry, 
not new at all. Like nothing, nothing is truly new in wrestling. It ju- it just isn't, and that that's okay. I'm not I'm not I'm not uh, shitting on it at all because I I love wrestling. You know, like I mean, the WWE has actually done some things that I'm pretty sure are brand new. The Fight Pit, pretty sure that was brand new. Again, eye for an eye, right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm pretty sure that was brand new. Um, but you know. I get like my, my point is like raw last night. I, I enjoyed it again. Was it perfect? Absolutely not. But, and, and I, and I even tweeted this and I wasn't, I, I I'm not comparing today's stars to the rock or stone cold or DX or whatever, but just the type of show, the way that the show was booked, the way that it was put together last night's show. If you go back and watch some attitude era Raw's. On the WWE Network, the award-winning WWE Network. Um, last night's Raw had an Attitude Era feel to it, just with, you know, look over here, look over here. This is crazy. This is happening. Let's go in the back and see these guys fighting in a pit and girls dancing everywhere. Like, yep. it had that feel to it. So, like, and I put this out there, and I've said it before at times. Be careful what you because everybody wants the Attitude Era back. Everybody wants it to be. You know, exciting and chaotic and blah, blah, blah. Well, careful what you wish for, because last night you got it, and people still aren't happy with it. So it's like, do you really know what you want? <laughs> that that's Because, again, I, I liked it. I, I, I did. I enjoyed Raw last night, and, um, you know, I, I, I'm genuinely curious to see what, what they come up with for next week. Jim, you're absolutely right. I am curious what's going to happen next week. It's going to, for sure, have me watch next week's episode. Are we going to get the fight, uh, or I'm sorry, the Raw Underground? But is that going to happen? Was it just a one to none, and they're going to scrap it? Um, will there be continuity between what we saw from week one to week two if they're both being taped on the same day or the same two days? However, they're really doing it. Um, are we going to see the new faction actually debut, or will there be another? behind the scenes interruption sort of thing what what is going to happen and that's what you want in a tv you want a cliffhanger to bring you back to the next episode i think the wwe successfully did that at least in my opinion again was it the greatest show i'm not saying that do not um misinterpret what i'm trying to get across here because it wasn't a home run i don't think it was an a broadcast it might not even have been a b broadcast but it was enough of crash tv to make me want to come back, like you said, Jim, much like the Attitude Era, Crash TV, to make me come back and check it out again next week. So for that, job well done, WWE. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Ryan, do you have anything else uh, to add today? Otherwise, we're going to close this thing up and uh, and be back on Thursday. Um, the only thing I have to say today, being Tuesday, and again, I get Thursday just two days away, but I can't believe – that the WWE hasn't actually ironed out where SummerSlam is going to be at. Maybe they have, and just dirt sheets are slow to report it, but I can't believe we're talking less than two weeks away now. Is it the 22nd? Yeah, yeah, it's two weeks from this uh, this Sunday. It's two weeks from this, for a little more than two weeks away. They don't even have a location, and again, they can always just put it in the performance center, and maybe that's what they're going to do. Um, I know... GCW has had success running up in the Atlanta or, um, Atlantic City area, uh, which, again, is New Jersey. I'm not sure what I think. Hogan is their, eh, their governor. I don't know. Hulk Hogan. It's Murphy. Not, but I don't know what Murphy, their I think, is. is. Oh, Murphy. It is Murphy. It is Governor Murphy. You're right. Hogan is uh, Maryland, I, I think. Hogan, Maryland. Um, you know, so he's allowing some sorts of wrestling. If you've seen any of the footage, from GCW, we're not talking a ton of fans around. Yeah. Um, they're near the 2000 that Meltzer is reporting that Vince would want there. Um, if you do it outside, you can probably get a grand. But, man, I mean, a grand socially distanced, that's, that's still a large area that, that needs sure. to happen. So who knows what they're going to do. I hope they can do something different. If they don't, you're going to watch SummerSlam from the PC, and it's not going to be a big deal. We watched a two-night WrestleMania which I think overall everybody said was a success mm-hmm. from the piece. 
SummerSlam from the PC is not going to be any different. If the content's good, it's not going to matter where it's at. Yeah, and I, I think all it tells me at this point is you're probably not going to have any any spectators wherever it is. Like, because you would think with with two weeks to go, you would you would imagine um, any tickets or whatever would 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 have to be on sale. Like at this point, so what tells me even if it is on a beach, on a boardwalk, um, you know, in a stadium, uh, you know, to me, th- what I said is do it like see if you can get it into MSG, but have no fans there. Like that would be badass. Are you kidding me? Like y- even even if it is an empty MSG, I would love to see that over a performance center for SummerSlam. Go back to where it all started. Oh, I really would too. Here's the deal. I think we're seeing the NBA come back uh, and, and NHL, and we've seen some still shots, but now we're seeing actual video and footage of what they can do without fans sure. in attendance. It's working, and it's something different. Um, you know, be it and, and the WWE did that, I think, really well with the PC and what they could do with the lasers, uh, and they really upped the visual of it. I think AEW has done a fine job of doing it mm-hmm. at Daily's Place, still using things like pyro. Um, because it's big enough in the outdoor setting that they can get away without that the WWE cannot. So if the WWE can visually do something different, it's not going to hurt them. But if they don't, again, it's going to depend on the matches. I think uh, at the end of the day, people are going to say, this was a good show because the matches were good and they told good stories, not because, hey, Pyro. I've never heard anybody say AEW right now is better than WWE because they have Pyro. (laughs) Yeah. Because it's outdoors and you can see a breeze blow. Like, no one's going to say that. So it's going to depend on the storylines and the stories that they can tell. Um, They would do themselves a favor for giving us a different look, sure, but it's not going to be the end of the world if they don't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, it it is what it is. I I, I think... I think that we will... I, I, I think we will see it somewhere that isn't the performance center. It's just a matter of where. Uh, at this point, but Ryan, let's, uh, I'm going to wrap this thing up. Everybody, uh, who, who tune in here, uh, appreciate it. And, uh, thank you for tuning in. Obviously make sure you go to three count Thursday.com, uh, for all of our social media links, our podcast links, YouTube merchandise and all of that. And, uh, we'll be back live on video Thursday night, eight o'clock on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash three count Thursday. Uh, Ryan, talk to you in a couple days, man. We'll see you then, Big Jim. All right, see you, bud.